not honest. This is why the girls will often pick the bad boy over the nice guy. The bad boy may be a dick, but he's more honest. The nice guy is lying all the time. Does everybody see that? So if you got any nice guy syndrome, who, who relates to anything on this list? Let's, let's take a look at it really quick. The submissive, well, I'm gonna come back to that one because some nice guys are submissive, some aren't, depends. So I might even take that one off. I'm, I'm not 100% on that one, but they can be submissive. Caretaking. Why, why do they caretake so much? They caretake even when somebody doesn't need the caretaking or want it. What's going on? Because they're trying to get love from somebody else. Yeah, validation, they're love. Trying to get. The only way that the person, that that nice guy can be loved by the person they're trying to care for or love in general by the world around them is to do something for the other person that they can be. So that's, that's what they believe. They believe their needs are unimportant. Your needs, wants, and desires are something to be ashamed of. That's, a, that's the core of the nice guy. So when we say sexual shame, we relate this back to sexual shame right here, right? Their needs, wants, and desires are something to be ashamed of. We relate this back to sexual shame. If a nice guy wants sex, what does that say? Unless she says she, she initiates it, she wants sex first. If he initiates sex at all or sexuality, how does he feel? It could feel toxic. It, yeah. It could feel something like that's not innate and natural that he's just experiencing there at the moment. That's his want, need, or desire is for sex. And if he lets her know that before she has shown any sexual interest, he's an asshole, he's a creep, he's a monster, he's bad, he's dirty, he's wrong. Because it goes against the core of the nice guy. The core of the nice guy is always putting himself last and he's trying to take care of everybody else because that's how he gets his validation. So if he tries to do anything, because do you, do you see that initiating sex raises tension? Yeah, it raises a lot, doesn't it? You're stepping into a lot of tension and the more you get into sex and sexuality, all the orgasm is a peak of tension to a total release. So nice guys have a really hard time. So this is one area. Translate this to business because business is a creative endeavor. I'm trying to create something from nothing, right? Create money, success, but also create value in the world. It's the same thing. In business, if I go out and I try to please everybody, what's gonna happen to me? How long before I'm torn apart by that business and I wanna quit? Let's say I get four or five clients. Let's say I start a simple business, like a massage therapist, and I go out and I get five clients. And this one wants this, and this one wants that, and this one wants me to come over to his house, and this one wants to come over. How long, because I'm gonna try to please everybody, because that's the nice guy, I try to take care of everybody, how long, bef because I have trouble saying no, how long before I feel so much tension it's way beyond what I, any human being could lift because I, I don't know how to set boundaries and say no. You see what I mean? You're not, it, you're bad when you're, every nice guy is bad at managing high levels of tension, grounding it, containing it, managing it, directing it. They just try to resolve it all as fast as humanly possible. And that's where the reactive nature comes from. They see tension, how do I get rid of it as fast as humanly possible? A non-nice guy says, how do I work with it? How do I step into it? How do I own that tension? How do I channel that tension into something better? The nice guy says, oh, too much tension. Let's get rid of it. You know, an example of this would be on a first date with a beautiful lady. How many of you go out on a first date and the first thing you try to do is figure out what she wants? How am I gonna make her happy? Where does she wanna eat? What kind of food does she like? I don't wanna pick the wrong food. I don't wanna pick the wrong drink. I don't wanna pick the wrong, you see what I mean? All these things that could potentially make you look bad. You gotta get it all perfect. How many of you go out on a date and you think it's your job to impress her on the first date? That's your job. And you don't even know her yet. You don't even know her, but I fail as a man if she doesn't want me after the first date and I've never even met her. How many of you go out on a first date and decide it's my job to decide if I even want to go on a second date? I'm just going out to see if I like her. And she's doing the same. That's a different way of looking at it, right? But do you see that the first one is reactive and he's negating all his wants, needs, and desires. And the second one that I just talked about is proactive, which is the other side of this. Okay, I'm not gonna write that on this one. But it's proactive. It's saying, you know, it's stepping into the tension. It's riding the tension like a wave. So nice guys are really reactive. Go ahead. Does taking part in combat sports like boxing, jujitsu, help the nice guy with his tension? Because I've done boxing before and I felt a shift within a couple of weeks. Yeah, it can, it totally can, because you're stepping into tension head on, but it's a very physical form of tension, right? So we say there's two types of tension. There's a physical tension, there's emotional tension. With women, it's gonna be primarily be emotional tension. There are nice guys that are very good at physical tension, but then you ask them to deal with somebody's emotions, they fall apart. So maybe they can go out and be a fireman, they can go be a cop and put somebody on the ground, but you ask them to relate to another human being, that's a whole different story. 
Like you could take a warrior, a perfect example is a Navy SEAL I met, a former Navy SEAL, and he said, some of the Navy SEALs, you could tell them to go take that gun on the top of the hill and they'll charge right at it. Yeah. And, and, and the fear of death, they, they have no problem, they get excited by it. You ask them to go talk to a kid girl at the bar and they'll turn on you. It's exact words. Some of these guys will just turn on you, like no. And they get mad, why? Because they can't shoot or kill the girl at the bar. They have to actually relate to her, okay? <laughs> they have to go into their emotions with her. And they don't want to do that. But the guy on the hill, they don't have to relate to him. They just have to kill him, okay? That explains a lot. Yeah. So it's two different energies. Now that doesn't mean you won't be a nice guy in physical tension. Some guys are nice guys everywhere. They might be boxing and they're really timid and then maybe they hit somebody a little too hard and they're like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, immediately. And the other guy's like going, now, now I just want to hit him harder, right? <laughs> I want to beat this nice guy out of him. And then some nice guys, when they finally get in a ring like that for the first time and they let go of their nice guy syndrome because this guy's pummeling them and they finally have to defend themselves, they feel alive for the first time in their life. They walk out with a black guy and a bloody nose and they feel like, Oh my God, this is fucking amazing. You get addicted. Who's had that experience? Because it forces you to let go. Just like you were talking about extreme tension. That's, that's why we get into that stuff. We crave it as men. We crave physical tension. What kind of movies do you do guys, masculine guys like? Action. Action. What about sports? All sports are ritualized forms of combat sports. Physical tension, right? What do feminine people like? Romantic comedies. What are they exploring in a romantic comedy? Emotions, depth of emotion the hero's journey internally, you know, on an emotional level. Um, well, it's interesting because the, the, both of them are exploring the hero's journey a lot. What kind of activities do feminine people like? Ladies? Connecting. Connecting. Yeah, well, it could be arts and crafts, it could be fashion, it could be uh, interior decorating. It all relates back to emotion, right? Art, all that type of dancing, which is expression. So the feminine is a form of expression.